Hello and welcome to another episode of Hull Design Tutorials 101 and today we're going to look at two hull designs in tandem. We're going to look at the Long Par 3 and the Long Par 4, the main reason being that they share very similar qualities um, and whilst par changes, the mentality shouldn't. Here we're actually looking at a, co a course that isn't one of mine. Um, this is Windstone by Gravy31, recent winner of the CC Design Contest. And this is a great example of a course where length marries really well with actually being extremely playable. Um, and it's probably one of the things that we discuss over the course of this video. So for me, the long par 3 and the long par 4, we're now looking at Whiskey Run, are really integral staples of making your course play in a varied manner. There are a couple of key features to bear in mind. We're going to go through them as we go. but. The main one for me is balancing your hazards versus the distance on offer and really making that approach shot interesting and requiring people to use the length of the shot that they're playing in to make that shot play differently to a shorter iron, namely make rollout matter and make people think about how the ball's going to react when it lands. And as I said earlier, the principle remains the same whether you're doing a par 3 or a par 4. This is the longest par 3 on Whiskey Run, can play up to 250 yards or so. And we'll discuss later how you can make this sort of hole not only manageable, but actually way more accessible than some far shorter holes. So first off, this hole, by distance and everything about it, is there to be in part intimidating. And you want to ramp that up. We're looking at the fifth at Whiskey Run, and you'll notice first of all, on the tee shot, you're hitting over a cliff. It's pretty daunting, you've got a bunker on the right hand side, but let's actually look at the landing area. You've got loads of space to land it in, the bunker isn't really in play unless you go way off. So although it looks daunting, which adds to what you want this hole to be visually and psychologically, it's actually not that difficult a tee shot, it's one of the easiest ones on the course. We then look at the second shot and you want to really make that matter. So talking about forgiveness, you want to think about where your hazards are and you want to really ensure that you're giving the player a lot of width because you want this pl the player to hit this fairway. You want them to have that approach shot in. Um, so really you've got to make this one of your wider fairways on the course. Again, distance is going to be your main issue here to bear in mind. If they're hitting a bunker, they've got to have played a really poor shot or they've got to have played really greedily or stupidly, frankly. Um, you don't want them missing the fairway just hitting into heavy rough because you've only given them 20 yards to work with and then they're having to lay up because they can't possibly hit this 500 yard par 4. So really first of all, let's make sure our hazards off the tee are pretty forgiving and that we're giving the player a large amount of room to hit this fairway. You might still want to have a preferred side so that you're urging the player to try to take this side on to shorten the hole a little bit whereas over here is actually safer it shouldn't be as it shouldn't matter as much as on a shorter hole or a short par 4 in particular you want to exacerbate those angles on a long hole not so much now the second point we'll just hit our tee shot and as you can see it's not a perfect shot but it's in no danger should be absolutely fine now what I find interesting and why I love building these sorts of holes is if I'm hitting a 6 iron in, it's not just going to bounce and stop. So people have to bear in mind what's going to happen to the ball once it lands. So now you're starting to look at the slopes on the green far, far more. If the pin's in front, well, do I maybe want to use this kicker slope and roll it in a little more? Um, and I think that's a major point. With that in mind, let's talk about greens and slopes. Now, for me, a key factor on this sort of hole is that there should be more helping slopes than there are hindering. And you want to bear that in mind with your pin positions. So if we look at the slopes around this pin, you've got one big feeder slope coming in. You've got a little just kind of mound just here that's subtly feeding balls in towards the pin as well. And you've got the slope short, which is going to take balls towards it too. So there's numbers of ways that you could attack this pin. You could come off or hit fast and end up short so I might try to play this as like let's hit a 7 iron if I hit a fast well I'm coming off that slope and in anyway if I hit a slow well I've got an uphill putt from around about here and it's still doable that sort of a thing if I want to go long well there's a possibility that it's going to feed slightly back down towards it 
you then look at, well, if I'm hitting a shorter iron into one of the front pins, actually now hitting an 8 iron, well, it's probably going to stop a little bit quicker, so I can be a little more punitive with some of the slopes around the green. Um, I think the other one is, bear in mind your green surrounds. This hole more than any other, you're going to need, there are going to be people who are hitting really short clubs in here. I've kind of got pretty long clubs, I've got the longest driver and pretty close to the longest irons and I'm still hitting potentially six iron if we factor in wind maybe more. People with longer clubs are maybe hitting three wood into this green if so let's give them a way to just hit up to here and just roll it down. Like have that be a really interesting shot. So if we hit, let's say we're going to hit slightly over here, I tend to hit my slows and tree to form hit the shot we thought we'd hit and hopefully that's just going to feed on down so although this is a long hole you should be able to see actually it's really pretty forgiving and you're giving the player every single chance to try to make birdie so talking about forgiveness and bearing in mind that distance is your main challenge and main hurdle on this hole the sixth I think this is at Winston is a great example you look at the fairway landing area you have a really wide fairway you've got options as to where you put it they do matter when you come into the green but you're not penalized if you're not missing the fairway uh, or a specific part of the fairway and the fact that the fairway is what 70 yards I'd guess wide means you've got a huge amount of room for error off the tee which means that really what he's doing is setting up for this interesting approach shot and we also talked about using the ground game well look at the front of this green, look at those slopes and how those going to feed the ball in towards this green um, and just make that approach shot interesting you're thinking about how the ball is going to react when it lands, you're playing it off slopes that's really the fun of this sort of hole now again your length and difficulty is going to depend on the type of course here we're at the 12th at Old Ainsdale which was designed to host the Open therefore the difficulty level is ramped up somewhat now in this case the driving landing area is pretty tight you're either taking on these two bunkers and trying to thread it down the middle for a look at the green or you're kind of depending on wind you're looking at that bunker and worrying about that a little bit more or laying up now the laying up question is a really interesting one on a hole that is this long let's have a look at where our longest driver is going to end up do you really want to be getting people thinking about laying up on something that's 500 odd yards and that's where your green comes into play again so if you're going to press the challenge on the tee shot let's make the green really like reward or kind of easier to get the ball pretty close to the green uh, to the pin even. Now one type of green that you will see a lot is this punch bowl style green. Now for those who aren't aware a punch bowl is essentially a template style where you'll see the edges of the green are raised and it kind of funnels the ball more towards the center. I've got 202 yards in over a grandstand no less but can I roll the ball up? Can I try to feed it off this slope? Yeah, actually I think it's potentially doable. Might end up short, but I've still got an option. I'm not taken out of the hole by the way that it's been designed, even though I've hit the worst drive possible and the worst approach shot. We're actually still going to end up on the green. And that really shows what this hole is all around about. I'm, I've hit two bad shots, but they're not catastrophic and I've potentially still got a chance of saving par. Now the long par 3, the same principle applies, it's just that you've got one fewer shot which means that you can stage the approach shot perfectly to be exactly what you want it to be. Now here we're looking at the 10th at Kayuma Bay which is one of my favourite long par 3's I've ever designed. You'll first of all note that we've talked about the forgiveness before, well you've got some interesting red slopes but you've got a lot of space in which to play away from them. Ground game wise, you have a huge variety of options, and this one bunker is there just to make you think a little bit more about them. You can, my favourite way to play this is to bound it way off the left side and just trust that the ball will filter down. Um, it used to be a little easier in the, the previous game, but I think it plays really well on this one as well. In terms of getting to the very back pins, this one can be stretched out to a full driver. Um, so you'd have to be pretty careful with wind when you're setting it up which I guess is one other factor you want to bear in mind. If you're playing with a hole that is this long, I, what, how long is too long and what do you want to bear in mind? Well, wind-wise, you want to be playtesting with wind, which thankfully is a lot easier now. 
distance wise I wouldn't push a long a par 3 beyond 270 yards this one has a 280 odd yard because I wanted it was something I hadn't done before I hadn't made a full drive a par 3 but again are we bearing par in mind this par 3 is by far and away an easier par 3 than others on this course because you can actually play it down this hand, this side and try to funnel it in you can play it down this side and funnel it in or you can go dead at it and you've got a bit of a backstop the other pins aren't particularly badly placed there's one in the middle there's one in the back right which has that mini sort of punch bowl and there's one on the back tier which you've got another little funneling slope in as well and again follows that principle of let's have more slopes that help than hurt now although you're hitting a long club in there's not that much danger around it it's an interesting shot but it's relatively trouble free compared to if we look over way over at another par 3 that is by far and away the most difficult on here if we head to 13 well this pin this is only 160 odd yards but this pin is treacherous beyond belief you can go all the way over the cliff and people frequently do you can end up short and you leave yourself a nasty pitch um, if you're putting at it you've you're going up a tier and let's bear in mind although it's still a big green because of the distance of approach shot I'm expecting accuracy to be higher and you put a premium on that and therefore you can get more I'd say you can get harder with your hazards and have a, put more of a premium on hitting the right spot on that green whereas that longer par 3 well we're saying that distance is really the dis the, the main factor so with this sort of a hole You've got to also think, where do you want it in a routing? What effect do you want it to have? And why is it where it is? I typically wouldn't put a long par 4 first. 473 is pretty long, but actually this one plays significantly downhill, and you tend to have wedge in. Um, additionally, Black Salt, which we're looking at now, is a major course. It was designed to host a US Open style event. So you're going to want a bit more challenge than other courses. Now the obvious place for me for a large uh, long par 4 might be 18 and that's what we went with here. 520 yard par 4 to finish with water very much in play and this breaks pretty much all of the rules that I've given you before. Um, you absolutely can get there in two but laying up may be the more prudent option. You have to hit this tiny sliver of fairway inside the two bunkers in order to even stand a chance of getting on the green which all flows massively towards the water and it's just really really tough. Is hitting the green guaranteed? If you're playing out here and playing for the easy bailout which I was trying to encourage everyone to do you are faced with a nightmarish approach shot but that's kind of fitting the course this was designed to be really tough from the word go. Um, however some of, some of the things that I suggest it still does do it's just the margins for error are really really tight you still have an area where you can bounce the ball onto the green it's just very difficult and you have to be hitting the perfect spot again designed for 2019 where it was an easier game and if you're wrong and falling down to here you're suddenly faced with a really awkward flop or pitch over so additionally I'd normally said well let's not ramp up the challenge too much off the tee I think if you're going for an 18th on a long par 4 you kind of can do that a bit more you can ramp up the challenge because you're saying to people go and win a tournament go and play the 18th in par or better if possible you can ask them really tricky questions that you can't if you're putting it on a different hole so I do think there's a place for making this hole a little bit trickier but you've got to be really careful as ever if you're breaking rules that are there for good reason you've got to know why you're doing it and you've got to be aware that there are going to be people who don't like that certainly I had a ton of complaints about this hole when it first got released with people claiming that some of the pins were completely inaccessible they're not but you have to be pretty damn near perfect um, even then though you've got to bear in mind where the hole is and I do think I stick to this rule so if we take it backwards 17 is a par 5 it's a long par 5 but that's a scoring opportunity so with that I don't mind making 18 tough 16 is a drivable par 4 so I really don't mind making 18 tough 15 is a tiny wedge in hand par 3 now when you factor in the holes that have come before it and the holes that are around it do I really mind giving you a, essentially a par 5 as a par 4 
Not so much because you've had your scoring opportunities and you've got to know going down 15, 16, 17, I'm probably making five or, be or worse on 18. So I think with this whole in summary, what it really comes down to is a couple of things. The first one is understanding the relationship with par, being forgiving off the tee or on the approach shot because you accept that distance is really your primary factor. Secondly, it's making that approach shot matter, but also using the ground game and allowing people to roll it in from short and having green slopes that really help rather than hinder too much. If you're doing this as an 18th hole, as we're looking at here, you can play with that a little bit more and require a bit more of a player. Um, try not to make it too long. Factor in different winds, different conditions, how it might play, um, and also now different lengths of clubs. But really, it can be one of the most rewarding types of hole to make, and it can be one of the most interesting ones that you put on your course for all of the aforementioned reasons. Now, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Really, a lot of the concepts here you will have heard before from me on the Reachable Par 5 videos or others. But it's manipulating them and using them all in synergy that will make your course and hole designs really shine. So I hope that you've enjoyed the episode and hopefully catch you soon.